welcome to the Danvers Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the agenda for tonight's meeting is down here. If anyone would like a copy, we have a, only one case tonight, so we'll um, be through the agenda quickly. Um, we have minutes that were sent to everyone from the last meeting. Can I have a motion to accept I'll move, Madam Jim. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, can I ask everybody to silence their cell phones so they aren't ringing? Um, and I'll introduce the members of the board. To my right, Bob Signetti, um, John Bowner, Ken Scholes, our clerk tonight. I'm Becky Kilborn. To my left, Jeff Sauer, Ken Jarvinian, and Corinne Doherty. And we have from Code Administration Department, our Secretary Kathy Archambault, and Rich Maloney, our building inspector. And the procedure for tonight's meeting is we will ask the applicant, uh, we will read the notice of the hearing, we'll ask the applicant to come up here and um, make their presentation. Then um, after the presentation is completed, we'll go to the board for any questions or comments, uh, any questions of the applicant, and then we'll go to the audience for any questions or comments, and then back to the board for deliberation, and I'll tell you your options. Uh, based on the comments from the board members. So uh, we're ready to go. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our first and only case of the evening, Michael and Karen Hubbard, docket number 19-4838, requesting a finding and variance to demolition and rebuild a house in accordance with section 3.17 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 11 Tibbetts Avenue. Karen recently purchased the property at 11 Tibbetts Avenue. Uh, so I'm David Jason, an architect. We're going to talk about the house plans in a minute, but this is a rendering of what we're proposing to build here at 11 Tibbetts Avenue. Um, Tibbetts is this little circular uh, road at the end uh, off of Doty Avenue. So here's uh, Tibbetts making the loop. And this little box right here is number 11. Uh, it's a non conforming lot in the R2 district. Uh, 20,000 square feet are required. We have about 5,600 square feet in the park so you can see it's tiny. Uh, there's a small uh, one-story house on it now. Uh, it's also not <coughs> conforming because the lot has uh, 50 feet of frontage where 125 feet is required. So a non-conforming lot. Here's some pictures of the house. This is the existing house here, the front view from the street. This is uh, looking at the back of the house from the uh, backyard. And this is the view of the water and the retaining wall that's falling down. Uh, while we've got this application filed, we're also in front of the Conservation Commission. We had our uh, we had a first meeting with the Conservation Commission last week. They didn't really have uh, too many concerns. I think they're looking forward to moving favorably on the project, but we kept the uh, item open because we wanted to hear from you and to make sure that uh, both boards approve the same plan. So uh, we'll go back to the CONCOM uh, in December. Uh, we also have been to the Historic Preservation Committee. You may recall that we filed originally in October, and uh, Mr. Maloney said, hey, this building is over 50 years old. You've got to get in front of the Preservation Committee. And so uh, we made a, uh, presented information to the Preservation Committee, and they determined that that building was not preferably preserved, so uh, not worthy of preservation. Uh, so here's our, our site plan, and the beige sort of outline is the existing building. You can see it's pretty close to the uh, southern lot line here. Uh, in fact, it's only 0 0.3 feet from the lot line, so basically almost kisses the lot line here. And the house that David Jacob has designed is going to basically be parallel with this, lo with this lot line and sort of pushed off a little bit so that he'll have five feet of separation between the building and the foundation. And when you, by the time you look at the overhang and the gutter, it'll be three and a half feet to the E line. So it'll be significantly farther from the southern lot line than uh, currently exists. We're also going to try to push it a little further away from Tibbetts Avenue. And the reason we're doing that is we'd like to be able to get a car in front of the garage uh, and while still having it off the pavement. So uh, we're going to increase the front yard setback from what is approximately 13 feet uh, to 16 feet. So that provides room again in front of the garage here. We also are going to have a little driveway over here to uh, put a second vehicle or a guest or something like that. The, the front door sort of right in the middle of the lot here. The, the house is modest. It's uh, you know 30 feet wide. I think 45 or th approximately uh, feet deep. Uh, we've got a one-car garage inside the building here. 
and uh, the entire house is in the flood zone. So uh, we're going to uh, elevate things up a little bit so that we don't have water getting into the living space, of course, during a flood event. Uh, the flood elevation here is 10. The finished floor is going to be at elevation 11 and a half. Uh, we would elevate the garage up if we could, but we've got to get the garage you know, onto the street. And the street's only down at elevation 8, so the elevation of the garage will be 8 and a half. And uh, we're allowed to do this in the flood zone by basically creating a crawl space underneath the living area with flood vents. So water will be able to come and go during large storm events without requiring any human intervention. Uh, as the flood recedes, the water will leave the crawl space or leave the garage. Uh, and, and obviously, they have no impact on the living space. Uh, we're also showing us a small shed over here. Uh, and, you know, <coughs> store garden equipment and things like that. And given our limited garage space, uh, you can find that understandable. Uh, from the point of view of our um, the size of the structure, we're going to increase the site coverage by about 182 square feet. And of that, uh, 72 is uh, associated with the shed. So we're going from about 1,200 square feet to about 1,380 square feet, uh, the footprint of the building. Uh, we are going from one story to two stories, so we're going to pick up our gross square footage uh, by about 1,100 square feet as compared to the current uh, building. Uh, setbacks again, we're going from 13 to 16.3 to 3.5 on the eave. And on this side, uh, we're going to be 13 feet to the eave. You'll see a little bump out in the plans that David will show you in a second here. Uh, 15 feet from the side line here to the uh, uh, edge of the foundation, which is fairly consistent with the existing building. Here's 15.1 on the existing building. So basically about the same there. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to David to describe the proposed building. And uh, the <coughs> We know the neighborhood fairly well because we did this house in the early 80s and we did several friends' house down the end. <coughs> and I've taken my lead off some of the houses in the neighborhood on the same side, same size of the street. And it will be a shingle style house with front door, um, a total of three bedrooms, and open plan on the inside. And that plan is deep within the center. It's the south side elevation next to the neighbor, neighbor, neighbor on the left hand side. This is what it is right there. Shingle. They never work. North side <coughs> facing the right hand neighbor. There's a stair element going through here. That's the element that Bob was telling you that popped out. Shelters, doors to the crawl space, and then there'll be flood elements there. For the, uh, so when the water comes in, it can go back out. And then front and rear elevations. Front as shown in the bedroom, the bedroom here, another bedroom here, and the utility room has to be on the first floor because we can't put it in the basement and that's this area. Living space, kitchen, all open plan. I'll show you the plan in a minute. Master bedroom here, master bath here. Great view. And it's much like all the other houses on the street as far as how the plan is used. And Floor plans come in the front door to the garage. Here is uh, mentioned utility room, lavatory, pantry, all open living space to a porch and focus out through the landscape rear, rear yard. Come up the stair, nice master bed, <coughs> nice master bed, laundry, walk in across a separate bath and two other bedrooms. And it's open to Alone. Um, 
it really will be a great house. Yeah. And in the back of the settings, we were required by conservation to do a landscape plan, and my significant other is a landscape designer. And <coughs> In the view, go right through the middle, of landscaping on both sides. This ocean, uh, river yard over here, pretty much hard surface. We're trying to keep this very soft. Nice. And all the all the plants that we picked were nicely in water. So, any questions? I'll be glad to answer. Do you have any more, Bob? Well, I just want to close by uh, reminding the board that. Um, our hardships are that we have a very narrow lot. We only have a 50 foot width to work with. Uh, we're a significantly undersized lot. Uh, we have 5,600 square feet approximately versus the zone that requires 20,000. And we've got our close proximity to the river with uh, setbacks that the Conservation Commission won't let us put the house really any closer to the uh, to the river. We've tried to move it as far away from Tibbetts as we, as we reasonably so it's a difficult lot to work with. I think we're going to be. We've we've uh, had other houses down there. I think we had the one next door. Uh, on, the, on the right side, as you're looking at it. More, uh, oh, left, I think. I'm not sure. What uh, do you remember? Which one it was? On the it was the left, left right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it was on the left. Down, uh, huh? Yeah. Fire, yeah. So. so nice yeah. Yeah. I think most of us have been out there to look at it. So. Um, it's a tight little it's, lot. Yeah. All the little cottages. So <laughs> it's a great spot, though. All right. Anything else? We'll go to questions. Okay, Bob. Uh, as Madam Chairman said, this isn't our first rodeo. Uh -huh. I, I don't have any questions. Um, I just have actually one for the building inspector. Is this a street that they've done a setback on uh, averaging? On setback. We have one on Brad Street Avenue. I think we have one on Dodie. I don't think I have one on Tiffins. Okay. Do we know, um, I guess I'll go to you, Mr. Griffin. Do we know the, uh, is uh, an average of setbacks uh, with other houses on Tibbets? They're pretty close. It looks like, you know, we're closer here, closer here <clears throat> compared to this one. We're going to be moving ours three feet further back. So I think yeah. anything, we're going to make the situation better. Yeah. I went out there. They they look pretty well lined up yeah. with the neighbors. I have no further questions. Thank you. Can you flip that back to the four pictures? I'm okay with the house. I think the house is going to be nice. Do you have to do anything with that riprap wall? This Rebuild wall that at all or anything? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to probably make some improvements to that. Um, uh -huh. You know, the, the conservation commission doesn't really want us to go very further into the right. into the water, but we you know we'll, we'll try to fix it as part of this project. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. Jeff? Um, yeah, well, I just have a couple questions, but they, they probably they don't really relate to the plan. But uh, do you, when you rebuild this um, wall, is that uh, waterways, acts, and all kinds of yeah, crazy after licensing 91. and difficulties? Yeah. After 91 in Corps of Engineers, too. Yeah, wow. it's a big deal. And um, when they figure out that you have to put in crawl space and elevate the building or whatever is that um, is that taking into account you know the the ocean rise with global warming and all that crazy stuff? So I think it is the the, um, the code requires. Um, Can you just step up, sit closer to the mic? Thank you. Yeah, so, so um, and Rich, correct me if I'm wrong, but the code requires that the uh, horizontal members, I think, supporting the first floor, be one foot above the flood elevation. So that means that uh, they've got to be at least at elevation 11. So even though the 100-year flood elevation today is set at, at 10, uh, we're going to start the structure has to be at 11. 11, and the finished floor is going to be up at 11 and a half. So I think there is some contingency mm -hmm. for potential sea level rise. Interesting. OK, I have no other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ken? So it looks like the shed is going to be like four feet from the house, side of the house? All right, so yeah, it probably gives you enough room to like I mean, you situated it there prior to get on either side with stuff to like move stuff. Yeah, I think there's some constraint in how close we can put it to the sideline too. I think that was one of our considerations. It has to be five feet from the lot line. Yeah. Right. We did exactly what we said. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I have no other question. Corinne, I just have one question. Um, how long do you think it's going to take for this project to be completed? 
So, um, depending on uh, how, when we can get started, because Robert's at the end of the construction season now, so we're afraid that we might have to wait till March to get started, but it's probably a six month construction. Okay. okay. We've already been told to get going on the working zones. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, the, the design is lovely. It, uh, the yeah, house uh, is gorgeous. It's going to look pretty there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any questions. Are there any questions or comments from the Mr. audience? Mr. Bradstreet. <laughs> Mr. Bradstreet. <laughs> oh, I am going to Yeah. yeah. Bill Bradstreet, town meeting member, precinct one. I looked at the property. Uh, if, is it the footprint of the replacement building? going to be the same footprint, not in the same location necessarily, but the same footprint? Not exactly. So uh, the new building footprint, I think, is about 130 or 140 square feet larger than the existing building. And as I mentioned, we're going to push it off from the sideline a little bit to provide a little bit better buffer between us and the, the neighbor on the left as you're looking at the house. Uh, so it's bigger by about 10 foot by 10. It's very tight down there. Will the oil tank that's to the left of the house be removed or hidden someplace? Not buried, but hidden someplace. Okay. We have, I'm going to ask the clerk, we have a uh, letter also from an about Yes, Madam Chair. We have an email from a Kathy DiLorenzo Macalone. Uh, my husband and I own 15 Tibbetts Avenue and have been informed that 11 will be raised and rebuilt. We have received a rendering of the proposed home and have no issues or concerns about the proposal. It can only help improve the neighborhood. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Madam Chair, if I could have one more question. Sure. Um, I, I probably know the answer to this, but I'm not sure. Is that does all oil down there for heating? There's no gas down there? Oh, there is gas down there. There, there is. All right, wow. So is the plan for this to be yeah. natural gas? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything from the building inspector? No? Okay. Bob? Uh, I don't have any problem with this. It, it's only money. <laughs> As you knew. <laughs> okay. John? Uh, yeah, I do vote for this. Uh, I think this is, will be an improvement, and it's uh, really going to be a great spot for you, I'm sure, when it's done. Um, I will vote for this as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think the uh, plan is very modest and appropriate for the site, and I think it'll be beautiful. Yeah. I'll vote for this. I think it's a great improvement, and I would vote for this as well. And I would vote for this too. And I would vote for this. It's it's lovely. Yeah, it's going to be nice. great. Yeah. All right, can I have a motion? Madam Chairman, I'll do the finding first. Um, uh, I we move that the board find that proposed uh, demolition and reconstruction increases the nonconformity. Have a second. I can second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I also move that the board uh, grant the finding uh, for this proposal um, as shown on the it's yeah, it's date on this. Uh, October. Dated October 23rd, 2019, yep. as it will not be substantially more detrimental than what presently exists. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. Madam Chairman, I also uh, propose that we um, grant the variance for the uh, same plot plan and everything. Uh, the hardship is the uh, shape of the lot. Uh, this condition does not affect other properties or structures in the same zoning district. A literal enforcement of the <coughs> excuse me, zoning bylaws would involve a substantial hardship to the applicant. Granting this variance will not create a substantial detriment to the public good and will not nullify or substantially derogate from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaws. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good luck. Thank you. Good luck to you. Okay. Is there anything else tonight? It is a five. Wait, does it to adjourn, please? Uh, I'll move the board of adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Danvers. Good night, Danvers. I think the other